Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Failed Franchises. In today's episode, we look at Arriva Rail North, better known as Northern Trains by Arriva, and how one timetable change managed to thrust the company into a period of decline. But was it really their fault? The Northern franchise is by far the largest franchise in England, calling at over 500 stations and having a fleet of nearly 400 units, with the franchise covering much of Northern England, as far north as Carlisle and Chathill, and as far south as Nottingham, Derby and Stoke. In August 2014, it was announced that Abellio, Arriva and Govia would be shortlisted for the next Northern franchise, taking over from the Circo Abellio joint run Northern Rail franchise. Arriva won the franchise promising to deliver up to 500 brand new modern carriages, taking up to 40,000 more passengers, as well as the replacement of the deeply unpopular Pacer trains. Arriva also promised that there would be a 40% capacity increase, as well as a Northern Connect service with dedicated regional trains on longer distance services between towns and cities that didn't already have dedicated express services, such as Bradford, Halifax, Blackburn, Burnley, Accrington, Lincoln, Worksop and Retford. However, before the franchise even started, there were questions regarding Arriva as an operator for the Northern franchise, with many questioning how an operator that covered much of the North's bus routes could have a monopoly on the trains, practically making Arriva the only public transport operator for many towns and villages across Northern England. So much so that, after the franchise officially began, the Competition and Markets Authority launched a full investigation highlighting how there was a significant overlap occurring without competition from other service providers. Regardless, on April 1st, 2016, Arriva Rail Northern began operations, inheriting a fleet of old sprinter units, as well as pacers and other old electric and diesel units. At the same time, Arriva announced it would place an order for 101 brand new electric and diesel multiple units to replace the pacer units, aging electric fleet and on higher class 180s and 185s. Arriva confirmed that CAF was selected as a manufacturer, being the only available train manufacturer to be able to build both diesel and electric trains off the same platform, called the Civity family. Bombardier made a bid to produce the electric units as part of their Aventra family, but were rejected as they could not provide a sister diesel unit Arriva required. Arriva stated that the new Civity units would allow drivers to be trained on both units in a quick and fashionable manner with the old rolling stock being the obstacle for passenger growth, especially for motorists, with the removal of older pacer trains being able to entice new passengers onto the network. The first of these new trains' body showers were constructed in 2017. Although the first few years of operations hadn't changed much, for better or worse, 2018 would by far be the worst year of Northern's operations. Passenger numbers had, for the first time in the franchise's history, hit over 100 million passengers and annum going into 2018, with electrification schemes in the northwest and brand new units bringing in a new era for Northern, with May 2018 being the first big timetable change since Arriva Rail North's franchise commenced. The timetable was to coincide with the electrification of the Blackpool North to Preston line and the Orsall course between Manchester Oxford Road and Manchester Victoria opening, with plans also ongoing to build two new platforms, platforms 14 and 15, at Manchester Piccadilly to increase capacity on the Castlefield route, the only electrified route through Manchester towards Scotland and Liverpool, with it being the most congested rail route in Europe, and only two tracks. Northern had already been training drivers on the electric rolling stock since 2017, in preparation for a May 2018 start for electric services across the North West and through Manchester, with services planned from Manchester Airport through towards Blackpool North. However, just four months before the new timetable, Network Rail announced that the electrification schemes would be delayed until November at the earliest. Thus, Northern had to hastily create an alternative timetable for the Northwest route, with drivers who were ready to drive in May with electric units now having to be hastily retrained onto existing diesel units due to services changing, such as the Clitter Road to Manchester Victoria services being extended to Rochdale. Drivers had to get used to different diesel units due to many of Northern's 1,500 drivers signing onto different depots with different classes of stock. Now Northern had a major driver shortage waiting to happen in May 2018. As well as this, additional services were planned along the Castlefield Corridor through to Manchester Oxford Road 
and beyond to increase capacity and frequency, with these penned in as electric units. Now these would have to be the slower and older diesel units. With slower acceleration, that would most likely lead to huge delays along the Castlefield corridor. An impending disaster was looming over Northern, and in May 2018, it went exactly how you would expect. Now seems like the perfect time to thank my channel members and Kofi donators. DB187, G Patterson, Lilo Rail, Louis Donnellan, Jack's Railway Secrets, and JMSF. All members get access to videos early, a thank you in videos, like this one, and tons of other cool perks. You can become a member by pressing the join button by the subscribe button. Do also subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this sort of content. You can also donate by checking out my Ko-fi page linked in the description for similar perks. Thank you so much. Now, on to the May 2018 timetable disaster. The morning of the 20th of May 2018 promised to include less overcrowding and more reliability, but a lack of train drivers on the diesel stock due to network rail's electrification delays led to hundreds of delayed and cancelled services. Platforms across Northern's network became full and many angry passengers emerged. Hashtag Northern fail trended on Twitter, with passengers calling the service a joke. Manchester Mayor Andy Burnham called for Arriva to be stripped of their franchise and reimburse all passengers for the delays and cancellations. After a week of delays and cancellations, Northern announced a temporary timetable from the 27th of May until the 29th of July 2018, removing 165 services a day to run a more reliable and feasible service until drivers were trained. Northern's cancellations spiked to 6% with services arriving within 5 minutes of planned arrival time, known as the PPM, Passenger Performance Measure, falling from a peak of 92% in 2017 to lows of 77 in May 2018, the lowest PPM rating since records began on the Northern franchise in 2009. The government was correct in suggesting it was Network Rail's fault, with Northern too late in finalising planned timetable changes, according to Chris Grayling, then Transport Secretary. The Castlefield Corridor also became home to the most delayed station in the UK, Manchester-Oxford Road, managed and majority ran by Northern. Between October to November 2018, Northern managed to have less than 40% of their services arriving at stations with 5 minutes of planned time, and only 71.9% departed within 5 minutes of their planned departure times. By November, Arriva was seriously considering pulling out of the franchise due to declining passenger numbers and the 2018 May timetable recast, leaving them with thousands of compensation claims. Between April to June 2018, Northern lost 2.4% of its passengers, with Northern only one of three franchises to lose passengers in 2018. Arriva Rail North was now infamous with passengers not at all trusting the company. In December 2018, the government implemented 15-minute compensation windows, which now meant any services delayed 15 minutes or more could be claimed on, down from a previous 30 minutes, which was to try and encourage compensation and to encourage Northern to become more reliable. Northern itself stated that they didn't expect a reliable service until May 2019, when the new Class 195s and 331 Civity units would be rolled out, with more staff trained on these units and the Blackpool North Line being electrified. The electrification would also allow Northern to alleviate its overcrowding issues on diesel routes by freeing up more diesel trains and allowing for the paces to be withdrawn. However, Northern weren't at all out of the woods. In August 2018, the RMT union announced its Northern members would be striking every Saturday after it was announced that the new Civity trains would be able to operate without a guard on board, with the RMT fearing the phasing out of guards on trains eventually, even though Northern promised guards would remain on their services, just without operating the doors. Transport for North agreed with the RMT and supported their case, but mostly due to safety concerns with having only one staff member on board, and urged the RMT and Northern to compromise. This compromise never happened, with strikes taking place on consecutive Saturdays for around three months, until the RMT and Northern found a compromise which would guarantee a conductor on all Northern trains, including the new Civities, until the end of the Northern franchise. Speaking of the Civities, the Class 195s and Class 331s entered service simultaneously on the 1st of July 2019. These units proved to be a huge upgrade to the Pacers, Sprinters and 1990s EMUs, featuring aircon, 100 mile hour operations, power sockets, open gangways, dedicated wheelchair sections, Wi-Fi and modern PIS screens. 
The trains feature large door vestibule spaces so they can sweep passengers off the platform. The units also feature some of the fastest acceleration on any British train, with the class 331s accelerating at around 1.3 metres per second, accelerating to 80 miles an hour in under 50 seconds. The class 321s and 322s they replaced took around 2 minutes to obtain the same speed. The full introduction of these units finally allowed the May 2018 timetable to be implemented, how it should have been, just a year later, with the units operating along the Castlefield Corridor to the newly electrified Blackpool North, as well as other electrified routes such as to Leeds, Doncaster and Bradford. The diesel class 195s replaced paces and displaced class 156s to strengthen other routes along non-electrified lines, with the units also running on the Windermere shuttle. As well as this, bi-mode class 769s entered service between Wigan, Northwestern, Manchester and Southport. The May 2019 timetable wasn't all rosy though, as it didn't include the promised half-hourly Green Bank to Manchester services, an additional Macclesfield, Manchester and Poynton to Blackpool service, or enhanced Sunday services. The Transport Secretary suggested that this was due to service diagrams unable to be accommodated without disrupting other services, letting down passengers on a promise that Northern had broken. Disruption also occurred on all Sunday services. A revad failed to agree on Sunday working for Aslev drivers in the former First Northwestern franchise, leading to many planned cancellations and short notice ones due to Northern struggling to supply the staff needed to run its services. Staffing issues continued to be an issue for several months, especially on school holidays and also weekdays. Andy Burnham, Manchester Mayor, once again called for Arriva to be stripped of their franchise, especially given as Arriva had promised to maintain minimum service levels across its network, a promise that it had broken. Even in 2019, the Times reported that the DFT recognised that the Northern franchise was unsustainable, with tight taxpayer subsidies making the franchise very difficult to record profits with profits peaking in the first year of operations in 2016 at just £21 million, with a subsidy of £275 million, expecting to drop to just £39 million by 2025. Services in early 2020 were still overcrowded and delays were still present. The civities had to wait until 2021 to fully enter service. Cancellations were still an issue in 2020, with 1 in 14 services cancelled in the last four weeks of 2019 accounted to 7.3% of all total services. Northern blamed the disruption since 2018 on industrial action by unions and delayed slash cancelled infrastructure projects promised by the government. Arriva also opposed the government on a stabilisation strategy the government suggested implementing, which would have seen the franchise supervised by the government, with Arriva left to the day-to-day -day service running, akin to franchises that we currently have. Arriva suggested this voided their franchise, blaming the Department for Transport and Network Rail for unworkable timetabling and failed infrastructure problems, which there is some truth to. The immense levels of overcrowding, huge delays and a reaver opposing the DFT led to the government, in January 2020, making the easy and popular decision of announcing that a reaver would be stripped of their franchise, with an OLR, Operator of Last Resort, replacing a reaver, with the service being effectively nationalised. On the 1st of March, after two years of solid delays, overcrowding and timetable problems, the government took over the Northern franchise, rebranding the service as just Northern, and changing the logo to all capitals to replace the Arriva font. Arriva apologised to the passengers, but suggested that a lack of investment by Network Rail to support frequency increases, as well as infrastructure delays and cancellations, had led to the poor service. Arriva rightly pointed out that they had indeed modernised their services, replacing most pacer trains and running six-car services on their busiest routes. Arriva Rail North ended their operations by thanking passengers and staff, as well as highlighting the strong foundations for the North's rail network. Since taking over, Northern trains continued to operate the new stock to replace the last pacer trains and oldest sprinter and electric units. More recently, in 2023, they retired their last Class 319s from service, replaced by younger Class 323s. Northern still undergo regular overcrowding and delays, however this is mostly due to infrastructure issues along the Castlefield Corridor in Manchester and delays outside of major stations such as York and Leeds. Northern trains also haven't had any serious issues with unions, although do face problems during national strikes, like every company, and have been able to run a more reliable Sunday service at more reasonable frequencies. The company have, however, cut services back since Covid, leaving some stations with a rather poor service. 
Northern are also planning to replace all Sprinter units, with a huge 450 carriage tender in place to ensure Northern's fleet gets modernised and to withdraw ageing fleets from the 80s and 90s. However, there's no further details on this at the moment. So, in conclusion, although we can deem Arriva Rail North as a failure, with the franchise being taken over by the DFT under an OLR, the issues faced during Arriva's tenure weren't necessarily their fault, with delayed and cancelled infrastructure issues caused by Network Rail and the DFT, with promises being broken, leading to carnage across the Northern Network, but Arriva are still to blame for overcrowding, union disputes and poor weekend services. However, we can't overall forget how the current government's anti-rail stance has negatively impacted TOCs, Northern included, with important infrastructure projects cancelled and an overall disliking of the railways by the current government not going unnoticed with this definitely being one of the main reasons for Northern struggles. An operator with so much confidence, sadly, was let down by its own management and the government's. Thank you for watching this failed franchise episode. Do check out my other episodes and other documentary videos. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>